Welcome back, brothers and sisters. Um, so something very interesting happened. You know, ever since I started this ministry on YouTube, um, I've had a lot of uh, people who connected, brothers and sisters in Christ. And uh, all of us are Bible-believing Christians. We do believe that, you know, that all uh, scripture is God-breathed, Theopneustus, God-inspired. And, you know, all the brothers and sisters in Christ that I've come across, um, to all of us are in a very strange situation right now, waiting for our Lord to come and very excited about it. But at the same time, we're facing a lot of trials in our lives. And I've come across uh, so many brothers and sisters who are facing, you know, trials in terms of health, in terms of wealth. So... I was just asking the Lord, you know, that, Lord, you know, we belong to you. So why are we having such a hard time, you know, of just living, of surviving? Why are we, in fact, you know, I don't think any of us who belong to you are, in fact, any, you know, great movers and shakers in the world. I mean, we're not billionaires. We're not millionaires. <laughs> we're not, you know... We're just ordinary people from different walks of life. Some are housewives, some are doctors, some are, you know, business people, you know, running small businesses. And yes, like myself, we have authors, we have creative artists, we have painters, musicians. And they all belong to you, Lord. So how come, you know, um, how come your people, the people of God, are not exactly the movers and shakers in the world. How is it that most of the big ticket names that you come across in Hollywood or big political, you know, um, biggies <laughs> are all, you know, all the really wealthy and really rich people and really, you know, uh, outwardly, uh, you know, happy people, they all seem to belong to the other side. So now, I know this world belongs to Satan, but I also feel that, you know, Lord, God, Adonai, my father, that you are much stronger and much bigger than Satan. So can you explain this? Why is it that so many of us are struggling, okay, to meet, you know, basic needs and basic requirements? So, you know... This thing, Theopneustus, God breathed, God inspired. So he took me into the Bible. And the Bible I chose this time to read was my complete Jewish study Bible, which is a beautiful Bible. Okay, and uh, he took me to 1 Corinthians. Now, I've read 1 Corinthians a lot of times. But in 1 Corinthians, Paul, who is who's a terrific apostle. I mean, he's he's got a tremendous sense of humor. And when the Lord took me and showed me this, let me read this to you. Okay, this is from the complete Jewish study Bible. I just took a photograph and uploaded it. And this is Paul. <laughs> and uh, I can just see him speaking these words, okay, to the church at Corinth. This is in chapter 1. From verse uh, 19, it says, Indeed, the Tanakh says, okay, because this is a Jewish study Bible, it says the Tanakh. Indeed, the Tanakh says, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and frustrate the intelligence of the intelligent. Hmm, interesting, okay. Where does that leave the philosopher, the Torah teacher, or any of today's thinkers? Hasn't God made this world's wisdom look pretty foolish? For God's wisdom ordained that the world, using its own wisdom, would not come to know him. Therefore, God decided to use the nonsense of what we proclaim as his means of saving those who come to trust in it. Precisely because Jews ask for signs and Greeks try to find wisdom. Okay. We go on proclaiming a Messiah executed on a stake as a criminal. Okay. <laughs> to Jews, this is an obstacle, like a stumbling block. 
and to the Greeks, it is nonsense. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, this same Messiah is God's power and God's wisdom. For God's nonsense is wiser than humanity's wisdom. It gets better as we move to the next paragraph. And this is where uh, Paul's sense of humor really kicks in. And God's weakness is stronger than humanity's strength. Just look at yourselves, brothers. <laughs> I mean, just look at you. Look at those whom God has called. Not many of you are wise by the world's standards. Yeah, I don't see too many Harvard professors here. Not many wield power or boast noble birth. Mm, no kings and queens, thank you very much. But God chose what the world considers nonsense in order to shame the wise. God chose what the world considers weak in order to shame the strong. And God chose what the world looks down on as common or regards as nothing in order to bring to nothing what the world considers important. Do you get that? I'll read that again. God chose what the world looks down on as common or regards as nothing in order to bring to nothing what the world considers important. Beautiful, beautiful wisdom, so that no one should boast before God. It is his doing that you are united with Messiah Yeshua, with the Messiah, the only Savior of this world. He has become wisdom for us from God and righteousness and holiness and redemption as well. Therefore, as the Tanakh says, let anyone who wants to boast, boast about Adonai. Adonai is another name for the Most High. So I just found this so interesting because when when he says, just look at yourself, I mean, look at you, who are you? <laughs> you know, you're nothing in this world, nothing that the world considers important. And in fact, sometimes we do look at our lives and we're like, huh, you know, fine. You know, we, we actually doubt that we're chosen by God, looking at our outward circumstances, you know. But this explains it. Do you see? <laughs> when he says, just look at yourselves, brothers. Look at those whom God has called. I mean, you're a bunch of losers. <laughs> he's, he's so funny. Paul is really very interesting. and. You know, you won't find the movers and shakers of the world going deep into the Bible, you know, being called by God for his purpose. You'll find the meek, the humble, the weak, you know, the people that the world has cast away as nothing, as nothing, as no one of any importance. God has chosen us, brothers and sisters. We may not be you know, great Hollywood stars or, you know, doing extremely well in our careers in this world or, you know, becoming uh, mega stars in the music industry or even, you know, in any field. But God has chosen us. And this amazes me. This just gives me so much. Um, uh, it Also, it amuses me because, I mean, just look at us. Who are we? We are nothing. <laughs> the world considers us nothing. We are nothing. Yet God has chosen us to be his sons and daughters. And this is the reasoning behind it. Because God chose what the world looks down on as common or regards as nothing in order to bring to nothing what the world considers important. All the things, all the people that you see in the world which the world gives such great importance to, are nothing to God. What God wants is a loving, repentant, humble heart. We are as precious gold. You, my brothers and sisters, you are precious gold to God. And sometimes you can, you know, doubt that if God really loved me, why am I not a superstar? <laughs> why am I not? That's not God's plan. 
His plan is given clearly here. Do you see this? <laughs> With Paul saying, gosh, just look at you guys. <laughs> look at the people God has chosen. <laughs> so I just wanted to share this because I was a, I was a bit gloomy, you know, because I, I get a lot of mails. In, you know, ever since I began my ministry, people are suffering. All of us are going through different kinds of trials, some in their personal lives, some in their professional lives, you know, some with their children, some with their parents. We are all going through our own brand of trials and tribulations in our lives. And I was just praying to God for all my brothers and sisters. And I was like, God, like, why is it so difficult for us? <laughs> why are my brothers and sisters going through this? Why is this? Why are you making this so hard? And he led me here. And then I understood that we are God's children. We are the weak. We are the needy. We are the humble. We are the meek of this world. And we are beloved of God. We are his sons and daughters. Because everything that the world considers important, people, and places and events that the world considers important, to God they are nothing. To God, His chosen ones, He has chosen the weakest, the humblest, the meekest people to come to Him. And while we may not be movers and shakers in this world, but God promises us an eternity with Him. And for that alone, we could give up everything we, we give up this world because as it is <laughs> we're not really of this world so i just wanted to share this with you i thought this would help some of you out there who are facing your own struggles and your own trials in this life just bear in mind that god has chosen you you have an eternity of glory and happiness with him so keep looking up and he also showed me um, Psalm 73, which I will do a series on that shortly, right? So I'll come back soon, probably upload uh, Psalm 73, the exposition on Psalm 73 today, because that also explains um, why Christians go through what they go through, right? So I'll sign off now. God bless you, brothers and sisters, and keep smiling. We can beat the, you know, satanic world at its own game. And in fact, we, we, we've already won. We're already victorious because we are chosen of God. So goodbye and I'll catch you later.